Hi, and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. In this section, we're going to talk about what we call ionic compounds. So we're going to finally get to the point uh, where we can look at compounds that uh, consist of a metal from the left-hand side of the periodic table and a non-metal from the right-hand side of the periodic table. And they come together and they form what we call an ionic compound. Now, we've kind of given a preview as to what ionic compounds are. In the last section, we talked about ions. We said that uh, elements, if you take an electron away or if you gain an electron, then the, the atom will become charged with a, a charge because of the excess electrons or the lack of electrons. And uh, we say that's called an ion. So the bottom line is we've learned from the periodic table in the last section that basically the metals on the left-hand side of the periodic table, and when I say left-hand side, I mean left-hand side of the jagged zigzag line, more or less, they all like to lose electrons to try to be like a noble gas, basically. And uh, some of the guys on the far left, you can actually predict really easily by the column that they're in what their charge is going to be, whereas the metals in the center of the table, the transition metals, the band in the middle, the large area in the middle of the periodic table, uh, they all like to lose electrons as well, but it's a little bit harder to predict ahead of time, so you'll have to go to your book to figure out what charge those guys like to attain, or over time you'll probably just learn uh, what they are. But big, big picture, the guys on the left-hand side of the periodic table, which are the metals, they like to lose electrons. They like to be a positive ions, right? The guys on the right-hand side of the periodic table, which are the non-metals, they always like to gain electrons to be like a noble gas. So on one side you have atoms that like to lose electrons. On the other side you have atoms that like to gain electrons. So these guys like to be charged positively, when they interact and, and kind of mingle their electrons. These guys like to be charged negatively. So if you bring a positive ion with a negative ion and you put them in close proximity, they're going to attract one another. So it's very common to get these compounds made of an element from the left-hand side of the per periodic table, a metal, combining with a non-metal. And the most common thing that I can possibly think of that's an ionic compound that we just hear all the time is uh, oxide of any type. Uh, think of rust, iron oxide, that's what that is. Oxygen is in the air, it's, it's in our atmosphere, it's everywhere. So lots of things react with, with, uh, with uh, oxygen to form an oxide of some kind. Most metals, if you just leave them out and just let them expose to the atmosphere, they'll turn dull or they'll be not so shiny. Well, that's an oxide layer that's kind of forming on top of your, of your metal there, right? So, uh, you know, silver tarnishes, uh, copper will turn uh, different colors if you leave it out in the, in the atmosphere. Iron will turn rust red because rust is iron oxide. So that's an ionic compound. That's an example of an ionic compound. Uh, we already talked about in general there are metals plus nonmetals. Those are what ionic compounds are. Electrostatic attraction is what binds them together. That's a big fancy word. It just means I've got the positive ion, I've got the negative ion. Opposites attract. So that's why those are stable arrangements. And we also talked about the fact that they kind of exist not as singular molecules that float around, but sort of like in a lattice. Think of, um, think of a crystal or something like that, or think of a sugar cube. Think of a, a regular arrangement of atoms in this sort of this, this big, nice rectangular grid. Of course, it's three-dimensional. So if you have sodium chloride, like your table salt, good example, right? If you look at it, it's kind of shiny and it's crystalline. If you put it under a microscope, if you could see the atoms, you'd see the sodium and then the chlorine, and sodium and the chlorine, and sodium and the chlorine. Next row, you'd see sodium and chlorine, sodium and chlorine. And it's, it's arranged in a crystal structure, or what we call a lattice structure. So we talk about the formula.